October, November 2017. The tax 2601 paper. Uh, let's just make this a bit smaller so we can see more of it. It's 100 marks, it's two hours long. Um, you're obviously going to be looking at this, question one to four. And you're looking at, well, income tax liability for an SPC. That's actually not too bad. Um, uh, taxable income of a company, also not bad at all. Capital gains, which is CGT, which is the stuff that we looked at last week. And then we've got the last bit, which is looking at micro business provisional tax payments and the general deduction formula. You can see all the questions are 30 minutes long. All the questions are out of 25 marks. So it makes no difference where you start here because all the questions have the same duration or length and the same mark allocation. So I would suggest you choose a topic that you're most comfortable with. So looking at these four options, option one is probably going to be the easiest to do because you're looking at a simple income tax calculation in order to get uh, in order to get the tax liability, basically. Um, and yes. obviously looking at an SBC. So if it's an SBC, you're going to need the tax tables for the SBC. Yes, sir. Okay, so let's start with question one. When you get to a question like this, immediately you go look at the required. And you can see here that they want you to calculate the income tax liability of Smiley for the year of assessment ended, 31st of March 2017. That's it. Then they talk about donations here and advertising. And if you scroll up, you can see legal expenses, trademarks, debtors, capital assets, personal assets, inventory, income. And then the question starts over there. They tell you that Smiley is an SBC. If Smiley is an SBC, we need to tax it according to the provisional, not provisional, the progressive tax tables, specifically for an SBC. We don't have to assume it's an SBC. We know it is an SBC. So you don't have to worry about the theory here. You just apply what you know that relates to an SBC. So just to recap, SBCs, remember, have special capital deductions. And SBCs also get taxed a little bit better because they have a progressive tax table, which is a sliding scale similar to an individual. Yes, sir. Right, then they say it's the finest part of the Income Tax Act. They manufacture party balloons and accessories. It's always a good idea to identify what business you're in because if you know what business you're in, you'll know how to treat the different line items that come up later on in the question. Yes. The company sells most of its products on credit. Um, does SARS care if you sell it on credit or for cash? No, so they don't. No, they don't. Okay, remember, they just want to know how much income you produce or how much income you generate. And based on the income, um, you can have deductions and allowances. And then ultimately, you're going to have to be paying tax on a specific amount that they would then um, use as your taxable income in order to calculate what you're owing them. Right, so yes. the first bit is really simple. Um, obviously, exam technique is important. So when you do a question like this, you need to structure it correctly. Um, so I want to just open up a previous set of notes. Uh, we could even go as far back as week two or week one even. Um, I think week two might be better because I probably would have given a better um, breakdown. Of, okay, let's open week one. Okay, so if I open week one, uh, there was this. There's it. That's what I need. Income, less deductions and allowances, gives you taxable income before CGT. Then you add your CGT and then you get taxable income. This is what you're going to have to create for this question. So start with income, less deductions and allowances, get your taxable income. Yes, so that's right. And then ultimately you want the tax board account. Yeah, so yeah, that's what you're trying to get. Once you've got that, then you'll tax it or you'll apply the SBC tax tables. Okay, and remember, UNISA should carry through your working um, if you do make a mistake somewhere, because not every student will get 100% for the question. You might make a mistake somewhere over there between income, deduction allowances, taxable income, and ultimately getting the taxable income. Uh, 
Except for, I think, uh, I'm not too sure about cost of sales because when I was reading, it said that uh, cost of sales is a little different. But um, yeah, so I've also got a question on that actually. Uh, cost of sales, remember, is part of a, um, an accounting calculation because you'll have opening stock, closing stock. Yes, sir. Okay, so when you see income here, you're just going to leave income as income. So okay. if you have cash sales or if you have credit sales, are cash sales and credit sales both included in taxable income? Yes, sir. Yes, it is. So you'll insert both here. Yes, sir. Cash sales, credit sales. Did you do that? Yes, I did do that. Okay. Dividends received from a local company. Thoughts? Um, it's included, but not subject to ta subject to, ta to tax. Percent. Why? Because you've got that exempt income line item. Any yes. South African company that produces um, South African products that's selling it in South Africa would be considered a South African company. If you earn yes. dividends from a South, uh, from a South African company, is it exempt? Yes, sir. It is. But you need to show it as income, then you need to exempt it. Yes, sir. Because if you just leave it out, you need to won't know if you knew that or if you just forgot to put it in. Yes, sir. Okay, so you need to specify that. The amount sixty thousand. Yes. Sir. So then you'll say less exempt income of sixty thousand, which leaves you with null. Okay. You have to show zeros. This is the only subject where zeros actually um, uh, have have a mark allocation. Okay, so if you have a zero as a zero, um, it's still <clears throat> something that's important to not being taxed. Yes, sir. Okay. Right, inventory thoughts. Um. I said inventory meets the definition of uh, deduction. Uh, how? Well, I said that inventory is um, um, it's within a, a trade and it was actually incurred the, um, the cost of purchasing uh, that inventory. Yes. Um, during the year, it was during the year of, um, of, uh, of assessment. Yeah. It was in the production of income. It was not of a capital nature, and it was laid out or expended for the purposes of a trade. Yeah, so if you're looking at the actual um, inventory, you, you'll obviously remember the um, cost and market value. Do you agree? Yes, so that's what I do remember, yes, sir. Okay, and what do you use? Do you use the higher or the lower? Uh, you, you use the higher of. No, lower. The lower. Uh, Where yes. did you get higher from? No, sorry. No. Uh, let me just check now. Chapter 5. No, chapter, yeah, chapter 5 would have been it, I think. Yes, sir. Uh, trading stock from, from page 18. Uh, prohibited deductions. Perpetual periodic. Oh yeah, we spoke about the general deduction formula, that's fine. 
okay yeah trading deductions and trading stocks obviously um, income that you're that you're um, generating that come from your that, that come from stock you you'd be looking at I should actually um, show you the textbook rather the study guide uh, what study guide would it have been in two or three two two sir the second one okay. yes sir I think change stock starts from page 18. 18? Mm, yes. Let me see if I can find it. 18 cost. Yeah, so that's correct. Okay, cost of trading stock. Um, let's see if they've given you the rule explicitly written here. I don't think they did. Um, I found... Specifically, what I do remember is because uh, 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 the, the 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 closing inventory. I remember we had added it back um, because we were minusing, right, sir? So we had added it back. I think because it was seen as as a uh, as an income, or rather, I think uh, a clo uh, trading stock on hand in a way. Uh, yeah, I would say um, it would it would assist you. Um, in terms of, let me say, um, inventory. So basically, the inventory will allow you to make a sale, basically. Yes, sir. Yeah, so if you've got inventory that's on hand, meaning that you have started with it. So remember, you've got beginning and opening balance, right? Yes, sir. So in a cost of sale calculation, do you add or subtract the opening balance? You add the opening balance, sir. You add the opening balance. Good. So if you add opening balance, what do you do to cost of sales? You have to subtract it. You make it bigger. Yes, sir. Okay, so if I make cost of sales bigger, I make the expense bigger, then I, then I basically deduct more. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay, so here we're obviously looking at, well, input, not input, um, inventory in terms of starting and ending. Okay, yes, so sir. what did they say you had at the beginning? They said... That uh, at the beginning that you had, that you had um, cost of, cost of the inventory that was held, um, that was held uh, eight hundred and eighty rand. That was uh, sorry, I wrote down the calculation. Yeah, the opening right. inventory. Eight hundred and eighty is the correct amount. That yes, sir. Closing stock. That was opening inventory, sir. It will add, sir. Yes, it will add to your cost of sales. So if you have more cost of sales, would you have um, a bigger or smaller deduction? Uh, you'd have a bigger deduction, sir. You'd have a bigger deduction. Why? Uh, you because uh, obviously as you're adding, you're making the amount bigger. So that means that there's more there's more to deduct for that item, sir. Uh, yes, basically that's right. So just think about this: is cost of sales claimable as a deduction? If you make a sale, is there a cost of sale? Yes, sir. Yeah, so there'd be an automatic link between those two things. Yes, sir. Okay, so obviously, if I'm looking at this, um, the opening stock, I'm going to add or subtract? The opening stock, so um, I would add it to my to my deductions. Uh, you'd add it to your deductions, yes, meaning you would insert it as a deduction. Yes, sir. Good. Right, so opening stock. Obviously, opening stock would increase cost of sales. If that increases cost of sales, what's it going to do to profits? Uh, it's it's, it's going to lower profits. So. Well, uh, increase the sales in terms of the amount. Yeah. So there would be an effect depending on what the actual impact is going to be. Yeah. So you would have to look at it more holistically. Um, if we're just focusing on supply and demand, um, if I've got an increase in inventory in terms of stock piles, I'm either going to have... A, a debit or a credit and it's either going to reduce or decrease 
the deductions. Yes, sir. Okay, so if I've got opening stock, opening stock will be added to your cost of sales calculation. If you make cost of sales bigger, you subtract more or less from your taxable income. Sorry, sir? You, you, you subtract more, sir. You would subtract more. So opening stock must be deducted. And that opening yes. stock was given as eight? Uh, eight eighty thousand. Yeah. Okay, negative, positive, negative. Why? Because that's opening stock. Yes, sir. Right, then you'll have closing stock. Closing stock will be considered an income line item. Yes, sir. Uh, I was going to ask you that that very question. So, um, would I have added it? Because at first, what I did was I added it to the up there on top, just under the dividends, and added it as an income. Correct. Uh, of six twenty, but then I wasn't sure uh, because in the last in the last thing what we did was we we actually as we're minusing the opening stock we we added the closing stock so I kind of just went back to doing that but we would have still been correct if I had added it to income in any case right? Uh, you have to add it to income because closing stock is seen as something that you've got it's, it's income um, uh, that the entity has basically. Yes sir. Yes sir. Yeah, so is it specifically included? It must be. Because then yes, you would have received a profit on the sale of those items. Okay. Okay. All right, what, what's next? Uh, what's next is your salaries and wages. Oh. Purchases, your purchases expense, of... right? Yes, sir. Minus 294000. Okay, next. Uh, next is our uh, pers personnel uh, costs. So, salaries and wages. That's all right. Okay, question. Where is this going to go? Um, I, I did it as a deduction because I felt it was in a... Well, I, I followed the deduction... Um, what was this definition? And I felt that uh, salaries and wages were incurred, um, that they were actually incurred uh, while conducting a trade during during our year of assessment, and it was within the production of the income of our business. It wasn't of a capital capital nature, and it was it's it was basically incurred for the purposes of a trade. So that's how I looked at it, though. Yeah, that's and great. I add. So what are you going to go as? Uh Income, deduction, allowance, we lean towards. I, I, I leaned towards deduction, so. Why? Uh, because like I just said, the, I followed the, form, the, the equation and I saw that salaries and wages were actually incurred, with the, the, that they were uh, within a trade, they were actually incurred and they were during the year of assessment and they were incurred within the production of income they are not of a capital nature and they were laid out for the purposes of a trade. That's it. Yeah, that's fine. That's just repeating the theory. But yeah, definitely what you need to pull out here is that if you've got personal costs, you're looking at the general deduction formula, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, so anything that affects the business specifically, that the business needs to operate, run, whatever, is going to be considered deductible. As long as it's yes. not non-allowable. Okay, so yes, sir. they won't allow you to claim. Okay, because they prevent you from abusing the tax system if they allow you to claim for everything. So certain yes, sir. things can't be claimed for. Yes, sir. Okay. So are you going to claim the salaries and wages? Yes, sir. Of course you will. Okay, good. So, will you claim the contributions to a pension fund on behalf of the employees? Uh, yes, I did, sir. Yes, you would. But remember that limitation comes into it. Okay, that 20%, 10%. Yes, sir. Have you ever seen that in the textbook? General deduction. Yes, 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 I do. Okay. Uh, no, no, no. I, actually, I don't remember seeing it. But um, it was that. Okay, so yeah, the one that I remember was the donation. Uh, let me just think. Where would this come out? Pension fund. I'm thinking probably book one where you covered the different uh, 
uh, pension fund was with um, those was with the first part of re- re- recruitments and um, four thousand is called uh, restraint of trade. I think, if I'm not mistaken. But I don't think it was. Yes, sir. Okay, it's employees. So you're contributing towards a fund for the employees. Yes, sir, it does. Um, yeah, I just want to find that paint, uh, part in the um, summit. Uh, not summit. Um, total. So yes, sir, it's on page 16, uh, book, book two, two, sir. Which book? Book two, page 16. I'm looking at yes. Yes, sir. Prohibited deductions or expenses. Do you agree? Yes. Okay, Wait, where sorry. Do you see contributions to a pension fund on behalf of employees. Uh, page sixteen, book two. Contributions made by an employer to pension, provident, and benefit funds. Uh, I, I am in book two, aren't I? Let me just check. Book two, what page sixteen. Yes, sir. After bad debts and doubtful debts. No, sir. Study guide two of two, sir. Two of two, let's check. Yes, it's two. under general deduction formula. Have a look, have a look. Two of two, right? Page 16. Yes, sir. Yes, one six. Contributions made by an employer. You just skip. you just skipped it. Yeah, there's a there. Yes, sir. Okay, so what does it say? says all contributions to these funds are deductible as long as it is incurred in production of in- income. Note, a benefit fund includes any friendly societies registered under the Friendly Societies Act or medical scheme registered under the provisions of the Medical Schemes Act. Yeah, and, and that's obviously benefit, so it's the pension benefit. But if you look somewhere here, there was a note here about the 20%. Uh, let me just see if I can find it. 10% and 20%. Because the thing is, uh, you you can't claim the full amount. You only claim a portion of it. Yes, sir. So let me just see if I can see it. Um, okay, I think. Can you go to this textbook section quickly while I just open up the notes? Okay. Well, what page should I go to? Uh, or what? Section four three ten. Session four three that's another okay, we would have covered this in the four three would have been five. Trading deductions. Looking at specific. Here's it. Okay, so there's it. That's what I'm looking for. Yes, sir. Okay, so you see that bullet? What does that bullet say? Uh, employer contributions to employee pension or program fund 10%. 10%. You see that? Yes, sir. Okay, so how much are you going to be claiming? 4,800. Uh, 10% well, 10% of, of 48. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right, and obviously, you need to show the actual working, so you would say forty eight thousand. Okay, times ten percent, maybe. Yes, sir. Okay, so ten percent of that would be deductible. So that's four thousand eight hundred. Good. Okay, next, long one. Thoughts. Uh. First, take one step at a time. 
uh, came to us with this one. Um, I the uh, the first one. What I did was I first uh, separated them and looked at the the first one as a sort of a, uh, as an allowance uh, because there was a new mach- a new manufacturing machine that was purchased um, at uh, at the cost of three hundred twenty five thousand. Um, and and it was brought into use on the same day that it was purchased on. Okay, yeah, so deduction allows is right, tree and the food principle. Yes, sir. Okay, so you look at general deduction formula, obviously uh, this could be seen as what? Income or capital? I would say capital, sir. Capital allowance. Capital. Well, because it's a because it's it's not income in the city. It, like it's it's um how do I say it? like it's it's capital because we're actually purchasing an, an asset which is um which is not something that we would be we're not we're not purchasing this asset in order to sell it off um like two days later. This is something that we're we're purchasing in order for us to produce um our trading stock. You know exactly. So production is very important, right? Is this movable yes. or immovable? Uh, this is movable, sir. Yes, okay, so brought into you. So are we going to use capital allowances? Yes, sir. Which one, though? You know. Um, I used capital allowance, I think it was 12C, I think, so. The special capital allowance chose. Well, for new and unused uh, plant and machinery in the process of manufacturing. Okay, so are we in the process of manufacturing? Yes, sir. All right, so if we go back to the question. It's a new manufacturing machine. Yes, sir. So, deduction allowance. machine it's going to be claimable the cost when was the cost or when was this bought uh this was bought on the 1st of november 2016 Good. it's What's with the year end? our year end is the 31st of march 2017 so it was bought within our within the year of assessment correct how many months excuse me um I didn't really take the months into consideration because I couldn't apportion it anyway. So I just looked at it as the fact that it's within the the year of assessment. Okay, they it's said here new or yeah. unused. No yes, apportionment. Sir. So I would literally take how much percentage? Though? Is this the first year, second year, third year, or fourth year? It's the first year, sir. Yeah, so how much year. is the write off? Um, it's three hundred twenty-five thousand tons of right? yes, which is one thirty. Do you agree? Yes, sir. Okay, so section 12C, you're going to write down 325000. Okay. You're going to multiply by how much percent? 40%. 40%. Yes, sir. Okay, and that gives me 130, sir. 130,000. Thousand is correct. Good. Okay. Can I ask a question just before we move on with this? Sir? Um, um, I think I think I, I, I uh, you see with the four, with the with the four years, right? So it says that 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 uh, that the asset can either be new or or you or you or or oh, actually no 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 never mind. Sorry sorry sorry. I I just um this this I thought I thought it said new or used. Sorry, it's unused. Excuse me. Sorry. I almost made a big mistake. Sorry, because um, although that I've been using the correct one, I think because I was uh, I was doing it because uh, I was trying to time myself. I was doing it in such a rush that I thought it said used instead of unused. Sorry, that was a, just my mistake. Uh, yeah, so you got to be careful when you do questions like this. Why? Because you need to look at all the different sections. Do you agree? Yes, sir. Okay, so my question to you is: What section are they now talking about? Um, what with this one, with the same one that we're doing? The next one. Next oh, the next one. 
It's a, a second-hand delivery that was purchased. I think it's still the same one. I used the same one just um, for for used for used um, used. It's still it's still topsy, just for used uh, used machinery or used uh, used uh, assets. Yeah. So definitely, you need to look at what's used and what's not used because that changes things for an SBC, right? Yes, sir. Immovable or movable? Uh, it's movable, sir. It's movable, yeah. So, second hand delivery vehicle purchased on that date. Is that the first year, second year, third year? How long ago was this? Uh, this was two, uh, two uh, assessment periods ago. Oh, uh, yeah, but are we still in the current financial year? No, we're in 2017. We're not in 2015 anymore, sir. So. Yeah, correct. But the- Uh, yes, sir, because it's uh, it hasn't been because it's only been two years after it has been purchased, so um, it hasn't been fully written off. Good. So it's a movable asset. Is it in the process of manufacturing? Yes, sir. Okay. So if it is in the process of manufacturing, what does that tell you about the asset? Manufacturing. Uh, yes no? It's five years. Okay, new yes. It's it's uh, used. Every yeah, it's twenty yeah, percent. Every year, not month. Every, every year. year. Yeah, so twenty percent. Twenty percent. Okay, so what are we gonna do? We're going to then apply this to that movable asset. Yes, okay, sir. So it's important to highlight these things as you go. Yes, sir. Okay. Um. So can I? Uh, can I just ask another another question? At first, um, it says here on page thirty-four of. Uh, of book two right so it says here non-manufacturing movable assets right because at first i I also thought that i should uh multiply that 70 times by the 30 percent because it says here um that um a non-manufacturing movable asset because i kind of thought well the vehicle isn't particularly used to manufacture our goods right um and it's a because it's it's a non-manufacturing asset and plus it's movable so I kind of looked at it in that sense of saying, like, um, I don't know if you can see on page 34, it says here that, that it was written off at 50% in the first year, 30% in the, in the second year, and 20% in the third year. So, because remember, at the end of the duration, you, you need to have how much percent? Zero, sir. No, probably 100. Oh, yes, okay, yes, yeah, because yes. Because you depreciate all of the assets. All of it, yes, that's right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can I? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Never mind. Yes, sir. What's wrong? No, no, no. I was just gonna say, like, um, as in, are we not wrong for for multiplying it by twenty? Shouldn't we be multiplying by thirty? Actually. Uh, well, it depends um, on new or unused, right? So, what do we have in the question? New or unused? Uh, it's it's uh used. Okay, if it's used, then which SBC uh description are you gonna be using? The five years, right? Used. Any yes, date? sir. And written off over twenty percent increments for five years. Yes, sir. Okay, no apportionment. So it doesn't matter when you bought the asset. So is this still within five years? Uh, that's what I'm debating with you, sir. And should we be doing it over five years, or should we be doing it over three years, actually? Okay. The, the because question of... is, it comes down to what asset do you have? What asset do you have? So you have a move- delivery vehicle. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, does so, the delivery vehicle meet the nature of a vehicle? The nature of a vehicle, so. sir. Okay, yes, was sir. it uh, any date? Yes, it was. Okay, in terms of write-off, 20% per annum. So every year you're going to be receiving 20%. 20% yes, of sir. that amount. Okay, so, so then what does Section 12E mean then, sir? Because uh, Section 12E... 12E, 12E is an SBC. Yes, so it's still SBC. Yeah, so Section 12E, movable assets. Oh, well, hold on a sec. That's what I'm saying. Every machine ABC was personal for the cost and brought into use on the same day. The first one is actually a manufacturing machine. So you would claim 100%. Because remember, it's an SBC. 
That's a yes, sir. That you raised. Yes, 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 that's what I'm, I'm asking. Okay, yes, what's so the then we need to change this. This needs to be 100%. Yes, sir. Okay, so it's basically the same amount. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. That, uh, it, it makes sense now. So, so then w w what is 12C? What is 12C then? What is it for? Okay, if 12C is for businesses that are not SBCs. Oh, so it's for everything other than SPCs. Exactly. Okay, because I was a little confused as to... Okay. Is that right? Yes, now it's all right, sir. Okay, so what am I going to do? Add or subtract? Um, I subtract the full amount. No, you'd add. Oh, no. sorry, sir. Are we, are we doing the... Because you're getting the amount, you're going to deduct. Are we doing the second one now, sir? Uh, yeah, so you're adding, you're adding those amount that you're going to be deducting... Uh, do you agree this is a second-hand uh, delivery vehicle? Is this going to be for manufacturing, yes or no? No, sir. No. Is this going to be for non-manufacturing? Yes, sir. Yes. That's what I'm... Yes. 30, 20. Do you agree? Yes, yes, yes. So how yes, much yes. would you have written off in the first year? You would have written off 50%, sir. Well, let's look at the year. When do you start the year? Uh, you started your year in... Uh, uh, on the first of, on the first of of April two thousand sixteen. Yes, and then for um on the thirty first of March, two thousand. March, uh, yes, March. Twenty. Let's put in the dates. Twenty fifteen. Yes, sir. First uh, of April twenty fifteen. Yeah, that's fine. And then thirty first of March twenty. 16. Do you agree? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay, then you'll have 16 to 17. And then so you'll have 17 to 18. Yes, sir. Do you agree? So when yes. they first bought this asset, when did they buy the asset? They bought the asset on the... March 2015. So somewhere in between. Yes, sir. It was there. Yes, sir. Okay, so how many complete years have completed? Well, that would have been one deduction, right? That would have been the 50. Then yes, the sir. next year would have been the 13, and the final year would have been the... The 20. 20. exactly. So this needs to change. Yes. Okay, sorry, we just need to double check just to make sure that we're dealing with the right legislation because this is a um, company, government owned entity. Yes. Okay, so I was right. Okay. Section 12C. Right, Actually, so 12E. You only take out 20%. Yes, sir. Only do which has 14,000. No, I don't get that. I get 81,000. New manufacturing vehicle. Oh. No. Sorry. So I'm on. I'm sorry, on. You talking sorry, about sorry. the second? Looking at the wrong line. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. The vehicle was seven thousand. Seventy thousand. So. Seventy thousand. Yes. Yes. Okay, times times the twenty percent because it's the third year. Does that? Do you agree? Uh, third year, not second. Uh, third, because remember. Uh, 15 to 16 is how much? 15 to 16? Is 50%, is sir. Is 50%, yes, but the date here was 31st of August. So then you would have claimed that. Then you've got then you've got the uh, 2016 to 2017. Then you Which is the year that we're in now. Do you agree? Yes, so isn't that the year that we're in now because it was from the 1st of... What did they say here? 31st of 2017. March 2017. So, yes, sir. Yeah, it would be the second year, so it would be 30, not 20, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. 21%. 12E. Yeah. So, because I, I actually, I'll, I had quite a quite a big question mark about that. Like, what's the difference then? Which one do you use when... But now I understand it. Now does it does it kind of provide more information? Like the one is uh, for normal business, and the one's for an SPC. So yes, sir. Back, I understand. All you need to look at now is just SPC. Yes, sir. Okay, because you don't worry about the other forms of ownership because that's what you're doing the tax calculation for. Yes, sir. Okay, what's next? Um, Manufacturing what's building. What's next? Now. Yes. Okay, is it right the building. Yes, sir. Workings, yeah. Okay, so what type of building? 
the manufacturing building. If it's for manufacturing and it was erected on the 1st of April 2014 and brought into use on, this, on, on May 2014 at a cost of 1.7. Uh, so obviously you're looking at manufacturing. Okay, yes, so if it's the manufacturing of a building, okay, we need to then apply the correct um, rules and regulations around that. So, yes, so. 12 quinn was commercial. Is this commercial? Yes. No, it's manufacturing. No, sir. So. Uh, it's probably number one. Section it was 13 one, yes. 13, 13, one, yes. 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 Used or mainly used for manufacturing. 5% annual allowance. So it's how yes, much am I going to reduce this by? 5%. 5%, which is 85,000. Yeah, so... Manufacturing building. Then brackets. The total here was 1.7, yes. Yes, sir. Times by 5% allowance. Do you agree? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 85,000. What's wrong? No, nothing. Okay. What's next? Um, what's next is the manufacturing uh, that that uh, that um, smiley sold technologically outdated manufacturing machinery for, uh, for 30,000 on the 1st of uh, March 2017. What are you thinking about? I'm thinking about uh, recruitment. Capital gains, basically, right? Cap yes, sir. Yeah, so you look at the whole capital gains story in terms of the allowances that you could claim here. Obviously, if you've got Smiley sold, selling technical outdated equipment for 30000 that's a disposal, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so with the disposal, we need to calculate the recruitment or carrying, uh, not carrying, capital, um, Okay, yeah, allowed, the allowed, yeah. um, allowances. Yes, what you're allowed to claim, yeah. Okay, yes, so sir. do you agree, uh, how much was the total? Um, that's what you sold. That's, that's oh, yes, yes, sir. Do you agree? Yes, sir. Okay, of the proceeds, it was originally purchased second hand on the 30th of June, 420 and brought into use on the same day. Okay, so there's a few things we need to check here, actually. I would draw a timeline because you've got lots of different dates here. Yes, sir. Okay, so 1 March. Actually, not too bad because 1 March is already there. Yes, sir. Okay, yeah. So, if it's 1 March, is it during the financial year or outside? Uh, 1 March 2017 is, is uh, within. Within the financial year. Yes. yes, 30, yes okay, so yes. if it's within the financial year and you, you had 30,000, they told you that the original building, or not building, the original manufacturing machine was purchased second hand in 2013 do you agree yes sir okay so um, this is looking at manufacturing equipment so you go, you go back to your section 12 e. E. okay new yes. and unused assets is this new or unused this is this is used sir okay so um manufacturing or non-manufacturing section 12 c sorry uh excuse me it's manufacturing sir so you're looking at E, eh? not, um, not uh, the, other, the other slide. It's looking at this. It's section 12E you're looking at. Do you agree? Yes. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, so what is this? Manufacturing or non-manufacturing? It's a uh, manufacturing It is manufacturing. Uh, asset. If you agree from 2013, you would have received how many uh, 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 deductions already? Well, let's work it out. 2013 to will be done by. That's yes, sir. That's two. That's two. Yeah. 15. That's three. Three. That's where the That's where do four. And we've already deducted all of it by then. Uh, let's Perfect. check. Would we have? Let's see. A rigid purchase on 1st of April 2014. Okay, that's the... Okay, so looking at, no, uh, 1st of May, where am I reading now? 1st of May total cost, Smiley, 
Yes, sir. No, sir. No, you only claim it once, and you claim it once for the items that you've purchased. Okay, yes, so sir. If I'm looking at this, um, what am I going to do? Add or subtract to my deductions? Or show zero? I would have shown. Well, what I did was. Um, I kind of, I kind of, because I realized that we had, we had, we had um, written all of it off. So I kind of did that, cal- that, that calculation that we usually do. That cost minus capital as uh, allowances well, uh, minus. Or am I doing too much? What is the question only asking you about? Well, it's well, it's telling me about the fact that it sold. So I should be looking at um, at a, at a, whether it's a gain or is it a loss. Uh, yes, that you can do later, but just tell me about the capital allowances. When would you have written off the allowance? Well, I would have written off the allowance over the, the three years, the, the the 13 to 14, 14 to 15, 15 to 16. So. Yeah, so are you going to have any other deductions? No, sir, by that time, no. Why not? Because you've written the whole asset off, the entire asset off. Okay, that's very good. Okay, so definitely you need to look at that in terms of dates. That's why dates are so important. That's why I try yes, to put timeline because it helps. Right, so how many years here? One, two, three, four years basically. What year yes, did you sir. buy at the beginning? Okay, mm-hmm. did she have, uh, 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 did, did, did uh, well, whoever this is, did, did Smiley have um, uh, an asset? Yes, Smiley had an asset. Did Smiley have to buy the asset? Yes, Smiley had to yes. buy the asset. So was it new or unused? It was, at the time, it was uh, second hand, it was used, so. Exactly. Okay, so whether it's used or unused, do you agree when does the manufacturing uh, for an SBC actually kick in? Like, when does the deduction kick in? The deduction kicks in from the point at which it was, uh, I think it was brought into use, so. was the second hand vehicle 120 you brought yes, it to use on the first the of March year. is the first of March within the financial year oh you so uh, you yes. brought it into uh, use on the, thir- on the 13th 30th of 30th 30th, 30th, 30th yes, of June yes sir. yes sir okay that in the future or now that's in the past sir. Uh, that's in the past correct and then what we need to then look at is, well, how much would I have deducted in 2013? All of it? Yes, because the manufacturing asset, yes. do you agree? Yes, sir. Okay, so they're, they're asking about the outdated 30,000. What are they, what are they going to do with the outdated 30,000? Uh, I would have looked at it as, isn't it a capital gain perhaps? Uh, cost minus accumulated depreciation. Yes, sir. Let's go for it. Yes, sir. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay, when would they have claimed all of it? And the same year, sir. Yes. The same year that it was born. Twenty would have been maybe. Um, uh, what, what's the word? Um, would have been utilized previously, taken advantage previously. Yes, yes sir. Okay, so that you don't have to worry about. You just need to understand how much did you actually write off. Okay, so after yes, thirty thousand in terms of process that you get now, did you have to pay any tax on that? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, you would have, because you would have been given that information. Do you agree? Yes, sir. Okay, so my question to you is, what is the carrying value? What is the tax value? Um, I I looked at it as zero, sir, so because it it was because it was um written off all at all. It, the allowances were 
we incurred all at, at, at once at the okay. first. Okay, that's the yes. right answer. So obviously you would have claimed a deduction in the past, so you wouldn't claim a deduction again. You would actually yes. claim Yes, sir. Okay, so are you going to show a deduction? Yes, you will. How much is a deduction going to be for? Nothing for this yes, year. Yes, sir. But what must you show for the... The, the profit on sale of an asset, basically. Your profit would have would have been. I think that the full thirty thousand wouldn't have been. The full thirty thousand. Uh, this is the sold. Uh, no, it wouldn't be at the deduction. The deduction wouldn't be that. Okay, did you make? A, see, uh, the question is, did you make a profit or a loss? Scrapping allowance or recruitment? I th I think it was a recruitment actually, Why? sir. Because, um, because our proceeds um, were much higher than our tax value because we had already, um, uh, I suppose, uh, received the allowances off of off of uh, the 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 full asset. That's why when I was saying to you that, um, I, I looked at it in the sense of saying cost minus the the the, the allowances which was my 120 minus 120 to give me a tax value of zero to determine whether it would be either scrapping allowance or a, um, a recruitment. So because my proceeds at the end of the day, um, uh, my proceeds were 30,000, yes. they were much higher than my zero. 100%. So I looked at it. At, uh, yes. Okay, so that's what you need to show. Everything you just said, just to re-emphasize, is the capital allowances right yes sir. so that's the recruitment here okay um, remember recruitment is cost minus accumulated depreciation uh, well allowances allowances depreciation is kind of the same thing just different parties call it something different okay then you can obviously show the 120 this 120 do you agree yes sir Okay, basically gives you zero. Uh, not zero, sorry. Uh, well, yes, zero in terms of no carrying value. Okay, so obviously I have no carrying value or no tax value. Okay, will, will yes, you still have income? Yes, you will. And the income of 30,000 is grouped accordingly. Yes, sir. So now, can I ask now, sir? Uh, because because we we had we had uh, determined it, it it as a recruitment, right, sir? And obviously, we know that um, that uh, that that recruit, recruitment recruitment would then become, I suppose, what we're limited to to claiming, I suppose, in a way. Wouldn't it then mean that the full thirty thousand would then be added to our? Yeah, to be added as, a, as an allowance. So. No, not an allowance. How, how is a recruitment an allowance? A, an allowance is something that allows you to deduct something from income tax. So you wouldn't have put it under deductions and allowances, so where, where would you have put it? As recruitment. Uh, recruitments are specifically included as a special inclusion. Remember special inclusion? Okay. Chapter 4, I think it was. All right. Income. The calculations are right. I think maybe my my income. my theory was the wrong. Income, income, income. Let's just find the page. Mm. Yes, there we go. On the last page of chapter four. Okay, so. What does it say there? Um, it says yeah, special inclusions which are added to taxable income amount. Exactly. Um, and there's. Yes, sir. Listed there. Yes, sir. Must have been included. Mm, yes. Definitely. Okay, so this is a separate working that you would have done by yourself in order to get the right amount. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay, and once you've got proceeds greater than, uh, proceeds greater than tax value, you can go into this answer normally. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, so some of these are quite tricky because you need to think about the recruitment as well. Okay. Well, so what does that yes, say there? Binding general ruling makes provision for delivery vehicles to be written off over four years where applicable. 
Yes, sir. Why? Say, sir? Uh, what is this? Delivery vehicles written off over four years. Do you agree? Yes, sir. Okay, do we have any delivery vehicles? Yes, we had the, the vehicle. I think it was a second hand. Yes, sir, a second hand vehicle. Yeah, we didn't actually have, yeah, we had manufacturing machines. So we had a machine, we had a building, we had a second hand delivery, uh, and we had another machine, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so that's actually done. Um, all you need to do there is just consider the depreciation on the vehicles. Yes, sir. Okay, so that we need to do. Depreciation, can I claim it? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, if it's wear and tear, and as long as it's... it's yes, it's wear and tear. Okay, yes. Okay. So, where did I have a delivery vehicle? There's one. Uh, you had a delivery vehicle up there. I think it was bought second hand. Yes. Where did you see the other one? No, no, no. I'm only talking about that one. There was one that we purchased second hand, so, which is the only circle to sell. So delivery vehicle and then delivery vehicle here. Yeah. Okay, makes sense. Yes, sir. Okay, so if I'm gonna be looking at the SARS tax value, which is fine, I'm going to have to insert the because this was a second hand delivery vehicle and the total cost of the vehicle was 70,000, but when was the date? Uh, the... 2015. So we did that, yes, we did that um, bit about the delivery vehicles because they told us what's the uh, ruling. So the ruling makes provision for delivery vehicles to be written off over four years. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. So if it's four years, how much percent do you write off every year? 25%. Ten, yes, sir. Yeah, so do we have yes, the right sir. amount earlier? Second hand delivery vehicle. Uh, let's see. Second hand delivery vehicle purchase to deliver back to its clients. The, the total cost was that, and the delivery vehicle was only brought into use on the 1st of October. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, so that was fine. And then here you, they said you already purchased second hand uh, vehicle. So the, the other point that I'm trying to discuss here is looking at the section 11E, wear and tear allowances. Yes, sir. Okay. So, would there be a wear and tear for any of these assets? Yeah, I think the vehicle, sir. The vehicle? But didn't you just tell me that this vehicle was purchased second hand? Yes, sir, it was. Okay, so if but, you um, it second hand, what happens? Uh, if you purchase it second hand, it's... It's, um... It's the SPC tax tables, right? Yes, sir. Okay, yes, sir. going to be used or is the vehicle going to be uh, depreciated? Uh, be used, do you, do you, and the usage yes, of a vehicle is going to be considered its... So so then when do we use wear and tear? Only when, when it's not being used, sir? Uh, is that what you're saying? Wear and tear is only used when you haven't claimed any other deductions. Because you can't, like for example, if you can't claim section 11A, then what do you look at next? Special deduction. Uh -huh. agree? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. And then after that, then I would look at a different chapter altogether. So specifically only when you haven't claimed anything else? Yes, you can't claim double deductions on an asset. Do you agree? Yeah, okay, yes, sir. What I'm trying to say here is because, have a look, you've got two vehicles, right? Oh, no, you've got machinery. You've got one okay. vehicle, actually. Did you see that? Yes, sir. Okay. So that one vehicle was purchased on the 31st of August to deliver the company's products to its clients. Do you agree? Yes, sir. And they said the total cost was 70000 and the delivery vehicle was only brought into use on 1st of October 2015. Okay. So yes, sir. you would be able to record the amount that you would have been able to claim. Yes, sir. Okay, so, so then what... Focusing on... Uh, let me go back to the notes. Um, let me see. Let me put my notes. Which one did I put up? This one. 
movable asset. Okay, yeah, this one's fine. If it's a movable asset, will I claim everything? No, um, d what do you mean movable? Well, yes, if it's a movable manufacturing asset, yes, you claim, yes, I claim everything. Okay, so was this yes. a movable manufacturing asset? No, so it was a, it was a movable non-manufacturing asset. Where do you see non-manufacturing? Which one are you talking about? Oh, we're not talking about the delivery vehicle, sir. Uh, yeah, we are. But we circled this one as well, so I thought maybe you're looking at the second-hand um, manufacturing machinery. No, so no, I'm, I'm just trying to understand, like, I'm trying to understand that, uh, that, bind, the, that binding general ruling number seven as to, this okay, if... This is for the yes, use sir. of the asset if you haven't claimed that. Okay, sir. Okay, so did I buy a second-hand delivery vehicle during the financial yes, year? Yes, not during the financial year. Not so during no. the financial year. When did I buy it? You bought it in 2015. 2015. So in 2015, would the SBC apply? In 2015, yes, sir. Yes. Was this manufacturing? It is a non-manufacturing. It's so. a non-manufacturing asset. So then it's the other one. Okay, which we did do, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so what did we show? 50, um, 50 20, right? Yes, so we did. Okay, and that's going to be taken off for the asset that you bought in terms of the delivery vehicle. So when looking at the delivery vehicles that are written off over four years, those are the vehicles that you've actually used within the business um, that, that, that weren't bought secondhand or that uh, wasn't an SBC. Because remember, SBCs get those special deductions. Yes, sir. Okay, so in actual fact, if the SBC didn't apply, would I have needed... The binding general ruling. If, if, if it if it if it if it wasn't, excuse me. Uh, if I didn't have the um, the second hand delivery vehicle, right? We spoke about the second hand yes. delivery vehicle. If I didn't yes. have a second hand delivery vehicle, okay. Yes, um, in terms of being an SBC, what would I do? Would I be able to claim? No, you wouldn't, sir. Oh, because what would I have used? Well, you would have used your... Section 11. Your section 12E, sir, yes. Yeah, no, because not 12E. Because have a look at this. This is capital allowances. This is looking at movable and immovable assets, okay? So yes, now sir. Now, look at this. 12C is looking at what? 12C Where is it's looking it's at... For yes, sir. So my question... Does 12C apply to this delivery vehicle? No, because it's not a SPC, sir. Uh, not an SP. No. Okay, it is an SPC. So do you agree 12C no, wouldn't yes. apply? Yes, yes, yes. Like the company is is not an is, is an SPC, is so SPC? that would. Yes. Yeah. And so that's remember, not for. This is for SPC. process of manufacturing. Am I using this for process of manufacturing? No. No. So would not. you have been able to claim this anyway? While not using those amounts, you'd have been able to use it using the the, the section twelve e. Yes. Uh, well, okay. So you see, you're, you're looking at twelve e because you know it's an SBC. Yes. Sir. That's what you're looking at, which is correct. But now, have you claimed the deduction? Yes. Which one did you claim it? You claimed it by that one. Thirty twenty. Yes, sir. So now, you you're actually writing this asset of how many years? Three years. Over three years, sir. Because yes, sir. Because you write fifty, then thirty, then twenty. Yes, sir. Okay, so are you going to show more depreciation on an asset that you've already written off? No, sir, so I wouldn't. You can't. Yeah, you, can't yes, double, sir. you can't double claim for an asset that you bought. Yes, sir. Okay, does that make sense? Does that clear it up? Yes, sir. Because I was a, no. a bit confusing with all these vehicles and stuff. No, no, no. I, I understand. I, I think I understand that part, all of what you said, sir. My, my only question is, if... With that in light, so was this last point that uh, that we just read about the um, the BG, I think the BGR number seven, was that to throw us off because I didn't use it either way. Yes, I didn't. Well, use it's good that you haven't used it because you wouldn't need to use it. That's the point I'm trying to make. Is that okay. you, you would only use this if you didn't have an asset that has already been depreciated or claimed. Okay, so, yeah, so, like so one, 
Manufacturing machine not applicable. Delivery vehicle possible. But why didn't we apply it there? It's because we used a different section to claim allowances. Okay, yes, sir. Yeah, manufacturing Understood. building, something else. Outdated manufacturing machinery, purchased second hand, also outside the scope because this is for a delivery vehicle. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. All right, the last few are a bit easier. That, that's probably more tricky, yeah. Okay, so now we can speed up a bit and get through this bit here. So now, what are we looking at here? Bad debts? Doubtful debts? What does SARS allow you to do? Remember, think about this. If you haven't received payment, should you pay SARS tax? Well, no, sir. No, that would be very, like, unfair on the business. Do you agree? Yes, I do. Okay, so can you claim bad debts? Uh, you... No, so you... Well... I I in like I included it in the deductions. Yes, you have to. Yes, sir. But the provisions you need to provide for elsewhere. Yes, at at uh yes, sir. Okay, so that's good. So at least you understand that. That's perfect. Yeah. So all right. So then you got the provisional doubt rates for last year and this year. Okay. So. Yes, sir. If I've got last year, what does that mean? Um, so this this year's one, I put it then last year's one, uh, the doubtful debt, I took that seventeen thousand and I multiplied it um, by twenty five percent. So yeah, it's always twenty five percent. Yes, sir. Okay, yeah. So the list of doubtful debts on the thirty first of um, March. Uh, we've got a provision, and we need to provide for it. So. The and I added it back. Which they will allow you to claim. Um, and the percentage was, uh, was it 25? Let me just go back and check. Uh, yeah, I you think so. You've got in front of you. Uh, where do we cover this? Chapter 4, I think. 3. 3 or 4. Do you remember? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can't remember. Uh, I can remember, but I just can't remember what section. I remember what it was under. I just can't remember. I think I'm almost there, actually. I think it's very close. We covered it. Uh, okay, no. No, we didn't. Not yet. Uh, right. oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I know which one it is. It's the yes, allowance one. Yes, page 16. It's the page one. 16, um, second okay. book, so. Oh, okay. You, you look at the textbook. Yeah, textbook's also fine. We can refer to that yes. either or. Um, maybe let's look at the textbook because you found a, a, a spot for it. Uh, what page? Uh, 16. One six. One six. One six. Yes, sir. Second yes. book, by the way. Book Second two. book. Yeah, and they say it here. This is donations. Okay, no, I don't have that on page sixteen. Oh, I no, 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 just go up, sir. Sorry, yes, sir. Up. Yeah, I see it. Okay, so there's the bad debt. Yeah, twenty five percent is the correct thing. And notice, twenty five percent doubtful debt only applicable to the list of doubtful debts. Notice, see list. Yes. yes. Okay, so do I have a list? Yes, sir. Yes, I do. Can I take 25% of it? You will, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, I can. Provision for doubtful debts. Okay, brackets. How much was the provision for doubtful debts for this year? 84,000. Yeah, 85. 84, oh, 84. 84, 84. Sorry, that was my... That was 84, 84. 25%. Yes, sir. Twenty one, good. Positive, negative, negative. Yes. Okay, would you have to take out the old allowance? Uh last year's one? Yeah, yes sir. Good. So they said doubtful debt allowance allowed for SARS for the twenty sixteen year of assessment. Yes okay, sir. So We've obviously got the list, and then now we've got the doubtful debt allowance allowed by SARS for the 2016 year of assessment. That's what they are allowed by. So the previous doubtful debt, would we have to add that back? Yes, sir. Yes, you would. Okay, so under income? 17. That was about 25. Last year's doubtful debts. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. And that amount was 17. 
So is it the full amount or do or, or don't we also multiply it by ten No, they said the allowance was that. Yes, sir. Okay, so remember they said oh, the in a uh, textbook it's... that um twenty five percent doubtful debt allowance is only applied to the list of doubtful debts, but not to the full debtors balance. The allowance of the yes. claim the year it must be added back to the income in the following year. Okay, so here yes, they gave you what? The doubtful debt allowance. Yes, sir. So it's the amount that I had to claim. Not the doubtful debt. Then I still need to work out twenty five percent. Does that make sense? Yes, sir, that makes sense. Are you going to take 25% of the 17? No, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. No, because that is the doubtful debt allowance from last year. Yes. Sir. Okay. Is that fine? Yes, so that is fine. Okay. All right. Yeah, and then trademark, that's that's simple. That's just the less deductions and allowances. Okay, so we need to put that in here. With the trademark, you would you have only because I, I think I was I was a little confused at this one. Would you have only put in the registration? Because I, I I only put in the registration okay, on the sixty five. Uh, let's first look at the renewal fee. So obviously a trademark. This we actually discussed when we did the one assignment. I don't know if you remember that. Yes, I do remember. Yes. Okay, so if I'm looking at the registration of patents, copyrights, designs, and trademarks, okay, we're looking at a renewal. Okay, yes, so renewal sir. is different from registration, do you agree? Yeah? Yes, sir. Because registration is when you create something from scratch. Acquisition is when you buy something. I didn't buy anything yet, do you agree? Yeah? Yes, so sir. It's a renewal fee. Yeah? Okay, so if it's a renewal fee, uh, they say in terms of research and development, allows a deduction in respect of expenditure that actually incurred in and then they've given you some bullets okay and one of the bullets there is renewal of the registration of any trademark does that make sense okay yes sir okay so what does that mean from what you've just read allows a deduction in respect of uh meaning that yes sir okay it's a renewal of do you agree yes sir Okay, so section B11 allows the deduction in respect of expenditure actually incurred in the renewal of the registration of any trademark. So 9,000 can be claimed. Okay, yes, sir. here this was a new trademark bright pink purchased on oh purchased on so that means this was a bought trademark oh, it's an acquisition yes sir. So it's actually acquisition yes so they each treat a different reaction okay so let's see section 11 gc provides for the allowance in respect of expenditure actually incurred in the year of assessment the expenditure must be actually incurred okay the invention was a patient blah 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 okay they've just given you the criteria okay don't worry about criteria because this wasn't a theory question this was literally new technology 
purchased on 31st of October. Is 31st of October in the current financial year? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, so the deduction does not apply to research and development costs, but the expenditure must be actually incurred to acquire either an invention, a design, a copyright, property, or knowledge. Okay, so what did we acquire here? A trademark. Well, yes, sir. Okay, so a trademark would fall into which category? Well, probably innovation, maybe, maybe even design. Mm, yeah, I think I'd probably put in one of those two. Innovation and design. We don't, we, don't, we don't know much else about this particular yes. trademark. Okay, but... Uh, Okay, so yeah. I was actually gonna ask. Um, actually, uh, just after what you had said, because it's because it's, uh, we're basically we're still acquiring a trademark. But now my question was then gonna be, uh, uh, the the percentage of allowance that would have been deducted, because it said there it would either be five or ten percent. How then do you do you know which which one five or ten? Okay, so we have five percent. Do we have a copy or a similar property? Uh, we. Yeah, I was about to say. Yes, sir. Does it make sense? Yes, is that why you would have? Why you would have done? Is that why you you were looking at something else, sir? Yeah, I'm trying to see and just check that in terms of the interpretation, have we interpreted correctly? Well, that's why my question to you is: Is this a patent, a copyright, or a design? I would have looked at it as a trademark. Bright pink, purchased on. You're going to go with trademark. Well, that's what it is. It is a trademark. But is it a trademark, is it a trademark uh, for uh, patent, copyright, or something similar? Knowledge and knowledge, uh, knowledge and knowledge rights. I think a patent. Patent. Yeah. No, I was wouldn't. Yes. We don't quite know what this trademark is for. What is this new trademark for? What's the thing? Purchased. Um, let me just check on on my. If did they say what it was for? Yeah, but I don't remember them right. In the registration of any trademark. Uh, oh, maybe it's any trademark. Then you're looking at section 11 GB again. Okay, just go one page or two pages back and look at section 11 GB again. Yes, sir. Have a look at the um, second last bullet. Section GB. So what page is this? I, I, I've got 11 GB on page 14, so is there another? Yeah, no, 11 GB is fine yeah. as long as you've got it. They're, they're bulleted, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so if they allow a deduction, would you claim it? Yes, sir. Definitely. Okay, what is that going to do to your income? Uh, yes, sir, because the deduction will have increased. Yes, sir. So I would assume that that's the case here. Yes, sir. No, it's all right, sir. Yeah, it takes a while to get the hang of it, but I want to revise as we go. That's why I'm asking you lots of questions. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. No, no, no. It's okay because because uh, yeah. yes, uh, okay. it's it's yeah. No. Okay, so seventy two is going to come off. Do you agree? Seventy two. Yes, sir. Okay, because that was the um, trademark. We don't know if this trademark was for. Uh, we don't know if the trademark was for, let me just go back and see what they said here. Uh, we don't know if the trademark was for a patent or a copyright or something similar. Do you agree? Or we don't know if yes, it was for a design. It just said new trademark. We don't know what trademark this is. Yes, sir. Okay. If it exceeds 5%, oh, sorry. If it, ex 
if, if the expenditure exceeds 5,000, then it's 5% of the expenditure or 10% of the expenditure. So um, how much do you want to take of this? So uh, just to just to be clear before we move on, um, when you're reading in terms of the the bullets section eleven G B, yes, was this uh, was this in the notes that you sent me, right? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, this was. Uh, I'm looking at a textbook note. Um, the ones in my notes. Let me go back to my notes. This would have been because I'm actually been kind of yes. Uh, it should be coming up. Okay, there's it. Okay, then we looked at this. There's it there. Do you see? See. So okay. Now, my my nice. question to you is: Do you know this is this is for Straight. a copyright, a patent, or a design? No, sir. You don't know. You don't. So that's why I'm saying. If it's less than five thousand, you can claim all of it. Yes, sir. If it's more than five thousand, you can't claim any of it. Yes, sir. Okay, do you see that? Yes, sir. Okay. Stood up to a fully. Okay. Yes. Pardon? No, I'm listening. Oh. Okay, so yeah, um, that's the trademark. Registration of a trademark, all colours. Okay. Registration of a trademark. Yes, sir. Okay, so that's uh, looking at the registration, which is yes, the actual yes, registering the, of the actual trademark. So they said here, yes, sir. Section 11 GB allows a deduction in respect of expenditure actually incurred in registration of any trademark. Okay, note that this section does not allow a deduction in respect of the actual cost of acquisition of a intellectual property which is patent design or trademark the acquisition dealt is dealt with in 11th gc okay then gc says um it provides for an allowance um according to that scenario scenario in those scenarios okay an invention or patent design copyright property or something similar or any knowledge concerned with the use of such property yes sir okay then you're going to look at the amount greater than or less than five thousand if it's greater than 5,000, you want to take 5% of it, or 10% of it. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But now my question here is, what do we have? Trademark of all colors. Is all colors a design, a copyright, or a patent? It's a big question. It's a... Uh, uh, yes, okay. I get you. You get what I'm saying? Okay, so actually, this goes kind of goes back to my first question, actually, sir. Um, which was when they when they talk about a when they talk about a trademark, because at first when I said when I said to you that I only that I only dealt with the with the with the sixty five, which is the one that we're on right now, sir, because I wasn't sure whether do we whether whether do they mean patents uh, the patents copyrights and designs. And trademarks are all like one thing and treated the same. Or in this case, what I'm seeing is that we, we're taking a trademark and we're trying to differentiate whether it's a patent, copyright, or a design in a way. So, are we, is that what we're doing? Are we taking something and then trying to dis, trying to decide whether it's a patent, copyright, or design? Is that what we're doing? Yes. Okay. Yeah, because do you know that from reading what they just said there? Well, I was I didn't really understand it, so because I thought that patents, copyrights, designs, and trademarks are all one thing, like they're all treated the same. That's the uh, way that I was looking at it. First. No, they're not all treated the same. If it's a patent or copyright, then it's five percent. Yes, sir. If it's a design, then it's ten percent. Yes, sir. So yes, now, sir. Is is all colors a design or a copyright or a patent? Yeah, I'm not sure. See, I, I also don't know. Yes, because they don't tell you that in the question and, and all we know in the question is they've got those things and then what business do they run it's uh, what was it uh, um, was it an art business yeah party balloons and accessories that's it yes, sir. that's all they told you so now are you supposed to just guess in terms of these trademarks and what is it is it a design so is is bright pink a design 
or is bright pink a patent or a copyright? I think it's probably a design, maybe. Bright pink design. But you see, I could be wrong. I mean, these words could refer to a different product altogether. I think perhaps, you don't think perhaps that these are copyrights uh, in the sense that, like, um, how can I say, like, if I take a picture, right, so for example, uh, and I and I name or picture or I paint something, right? Better, this is a bit. If I if I paint something and there's lots of pink all over it, what am I going to register it as? At at um, at CIPC, so would I not register it as a copyright in the sense that no one should kind of steal my 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 artwork in the sense? So every time that perhaps. A publication wants to use my painting or a picture of my painting or my picture wouldn't they have to then come to me the copyright owner and pay duties that's that's what i'm that's kind of the way that i'm kind of looking at it at so that's, that's the right way of looking at it because remember you have to register these patents with someone and obviously that individual or that person or that institution is obviously going to give you the right to have that trademark um, and now yes. the trademark is either going to be for a design, a patent, or a copyright. Okay, so obviously the trademark could be something like this. All colors, bright pink. Okay, but is that a copyright, patent, or design? You see, now, is it a bright pink design? Is it an all colors range of, like, pens and pencils? Or, like, what is that all? Like, do you see what I'm saying? Uh, yes, uh, but I, I'm looking at it in the sense of saying... Um, it, it could possibly be, in my in my opinion, probably probably a copyright or design because I don't think a painting. The painting is kind of like for an invention in a way. Like I invented crayons yeah. and I patented, right? Yeah. Whereas copyrights, um, for me, copyrights and designs would be would be more in line with this. The only issue is, like you say. They uh, for for copyright it's five percent for design it's a totally different percentage so 10%. yeah okay, so I'm also kind of lost to it yeah so see that's that's the big question mark is the, the thing is the question's not very clear because they leave yes, it hanging in the air yes yes uh, I mean they talk about a new trademark and they talk about a registration of a trademark they should have just said a new design or a new patent. <coughs> Or a registration yeah, of yes. a design or a registration of a patent. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to leave it as is and just leave those two. We'll, go, we'll assume that they are both um, um, exceeding. Okay, so this is what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to show 5% or 10%. Mm -hmm, yes, sir. All right, so are they less than 5,000? No, they're both greater than. Yes, sir. Okay, so... What do you think the first one is going to be? Bright pink. Um, as in whether it's a copyright or a design. Yeah. Um, bright pink. I think I think it perhaps would be a design. I'll just say design. Okay. Quite honestly. Yes. All right. So if it's design, times by how much percentage? Ten percent. If it's yes, sir. Okay. So it's seven thousand two hundred. Okay, yes, sir. Okay. Renewal of a, of a um, trademark? A renewal? I don't know. I think... The renewal... Renewal, renewal. Can I, can I uh, ask... Oh, no. I, I, I looked at... If you can see, like, page 15. So, um, it said there... Um, the acquisition of trademark will not... Qualify for deduction, but only the renewal of the. You see, here's what here's what I read. So, okay. page fifteen, it says here, it says that the acquisition of a trademark will not qualify for a deduction. So. Oh, so bright pink, the seventy-two, we would we would eliminate. Yes. Okay. Fair yes. enough. Okay, In fair terms enough. of that section makes, eleven, GC. That makes, uh, that makes sense. Fine. I, I agree okay. with is here then um, in terms of yeah. because it obviously had purchased there yes yeah. so it says here if it goes on to say only 
the renewal. Yeah, no, the renewal will be the... fine. With. That that nine thousand will keep there. Okay, yeah. so so we're looking at at all colors and just all colors. No, not all colors. No. Because no, I'm talking all about the registration. The registration. That's a new patent or a new Yes, design. sir. Okay. Okay, so that's so we don't... that that okay, so... um that all colors will still apply, but the ten percent now needs to go up. Where's for all colors? We don't have all colors. See, we need to put all colors in. We've only done the one. We haven't done the last one. Yes. Okay, so I agree with you that this should have been 6,500 and this will be null. Okay, because acquisition of a trademark not Yes, sir. Okay, fair enough. That makes sense. That that does make sense because the question did say that it was purchased. Yes, yes, yes. So then that's fine. Yeah, I'm happy with that now. Yes, now I'm happy. Yeah. Right. Legal expenses. What is the legal expenses for, though? The the legal expenses were for were for his personal cap for his. So I said, yeah, yes, sir. That was actually going to be. I put a star next to it because I wasn't sure what I would do with it because I know that um, it's not. It wouldn't form. It wouldn't form part of the, or, or, uh, as a deduction. I just wasn't sure what I would put it as. Actually. Yeah. So now you need to ask yourself: Was this for business expenditure or not? No, so it was not. What is it for? It was for personal. I don't know. Personal, maybe personal fines or something. Exactly. So can you claim yes. for personal? No, so you can't. No. You can show it, but you just show zero. Are oh, you still show it? Just not so. Because remember, the, the, the examiner won't know if you've put it in or just left it out. So, so would you put it... I mean, after after putting income and then saying deductions and allowances, so I'd put it under the deductions and allowances, just putting no. Okay. Yeah, because it relates to that. Okay. But can you claim it? No. No, sir. No, why not? Because it was not... Um, I said, yeah, my reason was it was not expended for the purposes of a trade, so it wasn't within our... 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 Our running of the business. Yes. Okay, good. And it's personal in nature as well as drawings. Yes, sir. Okay, advertising costs. Is this a Section 11A deduction? Um, what's that, sir? Advertising. Um, I, I wanted to ask you this question, actually, sir. Um, in terms of advertising, are, are sales not the fruit received from advertising? Therefore, making advertising sort of like a capital, a oh, capital in nature. That's a good question. No, you wouldn't, because remember, uh, if you're saying that advertising is the tree, and the sales is the fruit. Yes. Yeah, so, okay, so basically, what you're basically yeah. saying is that that if I just pay for advertising, I'm going to have sales forever. Uh, what I was looking at from a, from a point of view of saying, for for us to. Firstly, we don't incur advertising, uh, I suppose, on a very regular basis. So it's not always uh, the very few companies advertise every single single month. They probably have a, an advertising strategy for like maybe uh, it will last them for the next two months and then they'll do it again. So I was looking at it, at it, at it and in a point of view saying that advertising was not a cost that we incur all the time, number one. And then I was looking at it and saying that our sales, our sales are so high as a result or they are a specific percentage as a result of the amount of advertising that we do so we so in the sense of saying like if we advertised every single day on every single channel 
then we would probably expect to have a higher a higher sales margin in a way. But because we don't, then I don't know if you understand where I'm going with this argument. Like I was looking at it saying that it, it's incurred not all the time, number one, and our sales are a product of our advertising in a way. Yeah, you, you're right, but you're going to have a very difficult time motivating advertising as being the source of a sale. Yes, sir. Okay, because they're not completely directly related. Because remember, um, if I advertise, do I have to sell something? No, no sir. The markets. Yes, sir. Okay, so what happens if you do advertise like crazy, but your product isn't good enough and no one buys it? Um, you have you have low sales. Exactly. Okay, so yes, you sir. Can't claim a deduction for something that's not allowed as a deduction. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, so, okay, yeah. so the so so how do we how do we treat the advertising, sir? As a section eleven A deduction. Okay. Because okay. this is for a vacant post, business purposes, normal eleven A. Okay. Okay. And then we need to obviously show zero here, and then we're going to get a total. Sorry, sir. I've been I've been answering, but I switched off my mic. Sorry, I forgot I switched off my mic. Sorry. Okay. So donation minus eighty thousand two hundred twenty. Does that make sense? Yes, so that does make sense. Yeah. All right. And then taxable income would be this plus that. Okay. So that's what you would be taxed on according to the tax table. Then I go to my tax tables, and I want SBC. So let's get the SBC tax table. Where is it? Here. Yeah. There's it. Okay, what line item are we looking at? The last line, do you agree? Yes, sir. And this 
should be a bonus mark. It shouldn't. They shouldn't penalize you for anything that you might have made a mistake with earlier. Uh, it should actually be almost like a given that you get these marks, as long as you can get to that point. Okay, so make sure you do manage your time a bit better in terms of um, an analyzing the right amount. So obviously we're going to have five nine zero nine eight plus, and then one point two eight percent of. Uh, seven two one nine eighty less five fifty. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay, it gives you an answer of whatever that is. One zero seven. I don't know. Yeah, hundred seven thousand two hundred fifty-two. So that's how much you're gonna have to pay in taxes towards this particular uh, for this particular business. Yeah. Can I ask a question? So, do you think do you think that, like in some respects, I suppose tax is kind of like uh, accounting in that? It is. Yeah, like uh, it, well, in terms of like the exam, it's in, in terms of like saying uh, uh, they 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 probably mark mostly f your 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 calculations. Then, I mean, this like putting it in the right format does count marks, but most of the marks, the bulk of the marks, just come from the calculations. Yeah, definitely. So if, okay. Because remember. You Sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, so I will definitely show working as much as possible because we don't know where they're going to mark and what they're going to mark. Yes, sir. Okay, that's why I say if you are using like a rule or something, if you can remember it, try, try put it in, it does help. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, let's check. Uh, let's look at the next one. Okay, this is not an SPC. Okay, so it's, it's actually similar to what we just saw. Except it's a company now. Okay, that was question one. Okay, so let's go to the bottom. What is the required ones? See, here they only want taxable income. Do you agree? Yes, sir. So that means we stop at taxable income. No liability calculation necessary. Yes, sir. Okay, they say the company has elected to claim section 110 allowance from the uh, that using the building recruitment set off where applicable. Alright, so all we need to do is taxable income. That's easy. Start with income. Yeah. Um, with this one, sir, what I did was um, there was there are certain qu there are some questions um, that I that I I had I had some questions so. There are some blank spaces that I left, especially when it came to, uh, well, I'll tell you, especially what in terms of like the building, like that re refurbishment and extension um, in relation to, to scrap. I think you, you answered a bit of the question earlier, but I just, uh, when we get there, I just want to ask again, like, how do we treat that refurbishment and extension? Because, yeah, but I'll, I'll tell you when we get closer there. But yeah, um, let's let's look at it. So obviously this is quite easy to do because you're just taking those figures from the question. So obviously this is a line by line thing. Uh, that's important though. Taxable income, taxable. Income before adjustments. Is that okay? Yes, sir. How much? Six thousand. Yes. Okay, so that's what you've got. Right, let's read number one. Interest thoughts. Um, interest. How did I cheat interest? Um, I said. Uh, I said. Uh, I. I actually took interest, actually, sir. And um, I. My question with interest was. Uh, the interest is um, would it not would we, would we not uh, uh, add it to income because this amount was supposed to be accrued to us and we're supposed to be adding all of our income whether we received it within the financial year or not. Yes. Yes. So I added it to income actually. That's what I did. Well, right after. Yes. Of 
Houston. Two a small interim interim asset. Um interim it went here. See, so now I, notice I, the SBC stuff doesn't apply, the section twelve E and all of that. Yes, sir. Okay, so you were asking earlier about that, now you can see it. You only apply that when you have those scenarios. Okay, do yes, I have sir. a scenario where uh, I, I need to apply that? No, not currently. Yes. Okay, because all I need to do here is literally take it and record it as is. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. so collective cost was five. Collective meaning for both of them. They qualify yes, for section E allowance. Does that make sense? Yes, so that does make sense. I think I'll tell you. I think I might have had a question on this. Uh, this was I think one of the things I had a question on. Just two seconds. Eleven E. Okay, sir. Um, my question was this, right, sir? Because it didn't. Because remember what we said uh, earlier on is that. This 11E is only used when we haven't claimed any other allowance, right? Yes. And we haven't claimed any other allowance, sure enough. Now, my question was going to be this. It says in the, in the, in the book that the allowance is, is apportioned for the period during which the asset was in use in the year of assessment, right, sir? But now... My question was was this, then how do we then apportion these two small interim assets when we don't have i suppose the i think i think the word is maybe like they're used for life in a way or the period, like the 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 duration which it's written off of in in a way because if you if you look at at the at the end of the of the um, of the question paper, it gives us like, it gives us like, um, I suppose, uh, writing off years and period and whatever. But then for these two small items, it doesn't say anything. So I wasn't sure, are we supposed to guess which, which items it is or? Yeah, you can't guess, eh? Guessing is bad. <laughs> you need to use the information that's in the question. So all you can do in a test or exam is make certain points that can help the examiner give you marks so like even earlier when we talk about that patent story or design story i would have jotted that down somewhere on the actual answer sheet because at least it tells the examiner that you gave it some thoughts yes sir okay because sometimes maybe they just leave out one or two little things and it kind of affects the question uh, with this one it doesn't really make a difference because they tell you to use section 11 e yes sir okay so they tell you to use it just use it Okay. Right. If you don't want to, then you can go back and apply all the theory. Okay, then obviously we're looking at is this manufacturing or not? Uh, no, well, it didn't say it was manufacturing. It didn't so say. So I, I assumed it isn't. Yeah, but then they tell you that there were two small items that were bought for 5,000. Okay, they qualify for Section 11E. So go to Section 11E, it'll be at the bottom here somewhere. They should have given you. There's it. No, here's it. Vehicles, undercover parking, furniture. So, what did we buy? Two small items. So, where would you put that? Probably under furniture, I guess. Uh, I wouldn't just as yet because there is something about furniture already, sir. Is there? That's, yes, that's why I was saying that, that they didn't say anything relating to those two small items. That was my question as to what do we do in that case when they don't... But there is a question about furniture, about, I think, furniture being sold, old furniture being sold, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Uh, it's a good question. Um, the, the, the thing is, they would have had to have given you that information to make that decision. Okay. Okay, because they can't just have you guess what the um, two small assets were. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. To me, it's two small assets doesn't sound like vehicles. It doesn't sound like parking, carports. It doesn't sound like furniture, but there is no other option. 
Yes. In, in the hospital. No, I I went through it, and then I I kind of left that that one out, so because like I didn't know what do I do, because they didn't say anything other than just the five thousand. So I was, that's why I was asking, shouldn't they have given us like like I was saying the the what's this period called like the like the the useful life almost? I think that's yeah, really the have. best. They, well, they did, but they only gave the useful life with three assets. Yes, but not for that one. Not for, not for the we one. I don't know what two small items. I mean, two small items could be anything. Yes. Yeah, so okay, see, so that's why. Right. Yeah, so. yeah, it's a bit ambiguous. Okay, but nevertheless, two small items I'm going to leave here. Okay. And I'm going to assume yeah. two small items uh, were written off according to what, what, what time frame do you want? Three years. Three years. So, okay. Yes, sir. Five thousand asterisk. Uh, no specific section eleven e time frame given. Mm. Okay. Hopefully, they would have given a correction for that, and then they would have so, um, they would have been able to solve for it. I'm going to leave it as minus 5,000 if that's okay. Okay, yes, sir. All right, three, easy. Uh, three, I said it's a manufacturing machine and it was purchased second hand at um, 460,000 Rand. So, with that, it was purchased uh, on the 1st of May, 2016. Okay, okay. Uh, 2016, so it's within our current financial year. Yeah. Uh, so I multiplied it by that 460. I, multi uh, I multiplied it by 20%, because it's 20% over five years, because it was a second-hand machinery item asset good it is manufacturing right so we're looking at section 12c this one yes sir okay. five years right 20 percent yes yes sir perfect section 12c which is ninety two thousand. Times. All right. So, uh, what was the year end? Can you just scroll uh, or just check the bottom? The year end was thirty uh, first March twenty seventeen. So thirty first March twenty seventeen. Okay. So, where's the question? Here's the question. Okay. So that's twenty seventeen. May is May within the financial year? Yes, sir. Yes, it is. Good. Is this manufacturing? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Is it movable? Uh, yes, it is. Probably. Okay, two machines. It's most likely, yes, sir. Uh, well, yeah, well, one machine, actually. Yes, one machine. Yeah, okay, so yes, that's fine. Um, and then you just multiply that by 20%. Yes, sir. Perfect. Okay, then you've got, that was machine three, hey, then four. Yes, sir. Okay, I said two was purchased. Here's the second one. Yes, sir. It's manufacturing, right? Yes, sir. Okay, brought into use on the 1st of Feb. Is 1st of Feb within the financial year? Yes, sir. Okay, because the year end was? 31st March, 2017. March, yeah. So, February is actually the start, right? Yes, March beginning of the year. End. Uh, but notice when they purchased it, though. 2nd of Jan. Do you agree? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So if it's new, would you have claimed 40 or 20? I would have claimed uh, 40, sir. Uh -uh. Why, no, why 40? 40 is in the first year that you buy. That's in that's in January. But then, sir, it says it says here. Brought into use, Feb. But we, we, we bought it in January, sir. 
Yeah, so January, then it's still... January 2017, it's not part of the t- uh, year. Could but then our year ends in end. March. So. We were born on the 2nd of... 31st, Jan- 31st March 2017. Oh, sorry, March. Okay. Yes. Uh, in 2017, fine. Sorry, I'm, I'm thinking of a different date. Okay, so no, uh, it's 2017, 2017. So that is in the financial year. So it's new, you would use 40%. Yes, okay, sir. You would use this 12C in the notes. You don't have that one. Is that right? Yes, sir. That's right. Alright, so 12C, uh, did I put that in? No, I need to put in another 12C. Alright, so uh, this was asterisk new, or number 3? No, not number 3, what number is this? Number 4. Number 4. Okay, so, minus 700,000. Times 0. 0.40, do you agree? 40%. Yes, sir. 280,000 deduction. Yes, sir. Okay, 5 is pretty easy as well. What does that say? Uh, 5 says a manufacturing building already was sold on the 1st of March 2016 for 3.2 uh, million uh, and it had a recruit, recruitment of 900,000. Um, it uh, it purchased a new m- manufacturing building called Three for five point five million on the first of May two thousand sixteen, and brought it into use on the same date. Okay, so the easy bit is obviously you get your mark for the recruitment. They gave it to you. Yes, sir. Okay, they told you that the manufacturing building was sold on the first of March twenty sixteen. First of March twenty sixteen was when last year, right? Yes, sir. It actually was in the previous previous. Uh, financial year. Yes, previous financial year. Uh, because yes, our current year end is 31st of March. Yes, sir. Okay, so it would have been April to March, not March to March. Right, so yeah, so 3.25 million would have been claimed for previously, and that obviously gave, gave rise to recruitment. Then they said it purchased new manufacturing building. Um, oh, let's just finish with that maybe. Okay, so the manufacturing building was sold. On 1st of March 2016, for that price, 3 million, wow, 3 million for a manufacturing building, um, okay, and then it, it had a recruitment, recruitment is fine, purchased a new building, 3 for 5.5, and brought into use on the same date, okay, so this is your other, your building allowances, do you agree? Yes, sir. Okay, so if we go to building allowances, what's happening here? Did you purchase or did you build? Uh... Wait, are we, are we talking about the second one? So while we purchased this, the, the second part, or the 5.5, we purchased it, so we didn't put it. Correct. Okay, so if you purchased 5.5, okay, which section 13 are you going to use? If you purchased, I would have used uh, section 13.1, if I remember correctly. No. You have to no. Use okay, so... Quinn, but then now, my yeah, yes, because uh, okay, it's a manufacturing. Make sense? Yes, sir. Okay, so in this scenario, how much did the building cost? Uh, five point five. So are we, are we are we looking at the building that we sold, or are we looking at the building that we that we just bought? Because uh, well, I'm looking the at that we sold gave rise to recruitment. Yes, sir. So recruitment goes as part of your, your income. Okay, yes, sir. Okay, that's the income. All right, because you're undoing what happened, basically. Okay, then you're looking yes, at the sir. new building that you purchased, right? And that was brought into use on the same date. So when did I buy it? I bought it on the 1st of May 2016. It's 1st of May 2016, the current financial year. Uh, no, sir. It is. May to March. 1st of May. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm thinking 1st of March. 1st of May, yes. May to March. Yes, sir. Okay, so it purchased a new manufacturing building. Yes, sir. Okay, so new manufacturing building. This is a building. So we're, what are we going to be looking at? Manufacturing, which is section 13.1, yes. Yes, sir. Okay, so you either get manufacturing or commercial. 5% allowance on that. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, 
Another vehicle, seven. Oh, eight. Isn't it six, 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 six first? Then seven, then eight, six. Yes, sir. What are you looking at here? Roof of a um, building, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so the roof of a building is replaced at a cost of 125. Is that income? Uh, if it's replaced, no, sir. I looked at it as a refurbishment. Uh, well, did you improve it? Um... Well, yes, I think so, because it was damaged. Uh, no, it doesn't say you improved it. It just so says the you roof replaced? was damaged by a tornado and needed to be replaced. Yes. So, a replace means you just bought back the same thing without any improvement okay. or refurbishment. Okay. Okay. So which, which section have you looked at, looked at uh, looking at? No, I was just asking, uh, in terms of that, because um, I don't know, the way I looked at it, it was kind of like, I understand what you're saying when you're saying that we were not imp that we we're not improving it, but we were replacing it, which is, to me, I kind of feel like it would have been sort of like a, a refurbishment, because had we left uh, the roof, then we probably wouldn't have been able to manufacture whatever we're manufacturing in that place, so... That's how I was looking at it as kind of like improving or maintain, maintaining our, 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 our manufacturing building. That's why I looked at it as a, as a, as a refurbishment and the 20%. So I'm not sure. Unless, of course, I'm not. Yeah, no, I hear what you say. I mean, the, 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 those are valid considerations. But remember, we can't assume things. We need to just use what's in the question. So based okay. on what we've read... There's obviously a tornado that damaged the roof, right? Yes, sir. And we replaced it with 125,000. Okay, yes, sir. Am I keeping the building in the correct state? I'm not upgrading or making the place any better in terms of improvements. I'm maintaining what is, 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 it is as what is. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay, so if you did purchase something, right, would you have classified that as being capital revenue? terms of the roof that'll be capital nature yes sir is it immovable or movable uh, i would have looked at it as immovable sir immovable the roof. okay you're replacing yes, the roof so if i'm replacing yes, the roof building only deduction if used for manufacturing was this used for manufacturing yes sir, the building was used for manufacturing yeah yes it was okay you replace the the, the roof so replacing the roof would be a repair. Okay, did we expand or make the building better? No, sir. No, we didn't. Okay, and this was done when? Um, in 2016, August 2016. How many years ago is that? Is that uh, first that's year? Probably not. Mm, yes, it is. Sir. Or is it? Yes, sir, it is. So if it's end of August, oh yeah, beginning of January would oh. be the um, beginning, so that's fine. Okay, so the roll, uh, not the roll, the roof of manufacturing building four, okay, which is looking at, uh, is this commercial? Let's see. No, it's manufacturing, so 5%. So what is the 125 multiplied by 5%? Uh, yes, because that would have been for building only, uh, for you if used for manufacturing. But you see, the the thing is, I don't like the focus here because this to me sounds more like a repair. But I see what you say mm -hmm. because it says replace the roof. But now, did yes. I replace the roof with a better roof or with the same roof? If it's the same roof, then I would view this as a repair. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, that's my only that's my only downside here. So asterisk number six. If it's a repair, what am I going to do? Subtract the full amount, section 11A. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay, 11A is general deduction. 
Right, then they tell you that the locker room was uh, extended to allow for undercover parking. See, that's an expansion. That's an extension. 200,000. Yes, okay, so now for, for, uh, for part six, we're looking at the extension. So have I built more to this property? Yes, sir. Okay, so now if I didn't have a building and I purchased it, it would be commercial. Is this commercial? No. No, uh, no, sir. All right, they said this was for what? The locker room. It was parking, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so definitely Quite manufacturing. Thing. Commercial, possibly. Residential, no. Mm. Uh, low cost housing, no development zones, no. Okay, so I would go with section 13 here. Why? Because this was a an improvement. Okay, capital in nature. Yes, sir. Uh, oh, oh, capital in nature isn't claimable. <laughs> this is immovable. Building only deduction if used mainly for manufacturing. The cost of extension amounted to 200,000. So it is a capital allowance. Yeah, so section 13 is fine. 31. Okay. Uh, so we would have we would have only taken refurbishments and extensions because we did we did extend here, but clearly it was only for manufacturing building, I suppose. Yeah. So even if even if they give us even if they give us that information, which because in the in the textbook they talk about refurbishments and extensions kind of applying to urban development zones. So in that respect, do we just kind of usually, we just use uh, 13.1 the usual way with the 5%. In that case, we, we kind of wouldn't really take anything else into consideration. Because for me, when I looked at the question, I kind of looked at, yes, the manufacturing building, but then I looked at what's being done to this manufacturing building. In the sense of like, perhaps maybe they change the, the manufacturing building, or do we just leave it the exact same way, and we just uh, multiply it by the five percent of thirteen of section thirteen one? Yeah, I would just tie it by the five percent. Okay. Okay, because you just look at manufacturing; it's not commercial, it's not residential, um, and no one's living in these things, right? So they must sp uh, explicitly say that it's. Well, if you want to use one of the other ones, then yeah, I mean, low cost residential is residential. Urban development zone, they don't, they don't talk about any changing of zones here. Okay. Okay, so I would just assume this is completely manufacturing. Yes. Can I, can I, can I also ask them, sir? Because we know that in, in section 13.1, I suppose uh, there's no apportionment, right, sir? Yeah, so why then at the if we just go to the bottom of the page again, why then do they give us like the um, what's the word again? Vehicle the useful life. Cover park car, park carports. Yes. Sir. Here we go. Where's eight year? Six. Sir. Six year. Um, yes. So this was for manufacturing building. Yes, so that twenty two hundred thousand. The roof to allow for an undercover parking area for its employees. The cost of this extension amounted to two hundred thousand. Okay, so if you were given two hundred thousand, that's the extension. That's the improvement. Do you agree? Yeah? Yes, sir. That would have been the immovable assets, right? Yes, sir. Okay. The, the carports are then depreciated. So. How much did the carports actually cost? Well, they don't say, but they, we, we, we know this is an extension for the undercover carports. So wouldn't it be the 200000 No, remember, you can't, um, because you, you've really got an allowance that you've claimed. Oh, okay. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Um, so if you want to yeah. claim more allowances, you need to claim it off the asset that's depreciating. Yes, sir. Okay, and you have yes. Yes, sir. Yeah, so they're extending the area of the employees. This, is, this to me is building. It's actual building. It's not the, um, it's the 
building off an item. Okay, yes, sir. Okay, so depreciable assets are assets that lose value. Okay. Yes, sir. All right, seven. Vehicle purchased new 1st of September for 180 was still in use on the 31st of March. Okay, see, vehicles purchased new. If it's purchased new, this is non. Uh, it's movable. It's non-manufacturing. Yes. Twelve. <clears throat> Nothing specific. So you use section eleven A. Okay. Not eleven A. Eleven E. E is for wear and tear. Wear and tear. Yes. Sir. years do you have to depreciate this for? Five years. Yeah, could be five years, yes sir. Okay, so divide by five years. Uh, what was the amount here? 180. Okay. Okay. Still in use on the 31st of March. Okay, so still in use meaning we still have it. Uh, vehicles purchased new on the 1st of September. Oh, but this is long ago. 20 Yes. Wow, that's a long time ago. Okay, so five years after that is 2016. You're not going to depreciate this. It's going to be zero. Okay. Okay. Purchase in 2011. Okay. Okay, now we've got this whole urban development story. See? Eight. Yes, sir. So that came from section six. Um, let me just go to the right page. Okay, urban development. Okay, just to recap the theory, section 13, quad urban development zones, refurbishment, 20% an annum, new extensions, 20% for the first year, and then 8% for 10 years. Right, so if I look at eight, what is eight focusing on? Um, I would say, <coughs> excuse me, um, eight is looking at uh, your, urban, your urban development zone after the first year, basically. Sure. So I would have, what I did was, I, I took the 3 million multiplied by the 8% for 10 years. But actually, but 10 years, but 8% for this year. Yeah, because the first, the first year would have got the 20, 100%. Yes, sir. Okay, good. All right, so this would have been a normal deduction. In terms of capital allowances, 13 quats. Hundred eighty thousand divided by twelve. Is that right? Oh, not twelve. Eight. Isn't it multiplied by eight? Eight. Well, not point zero eight. Uh, sir, are we are we dividing by or are we multiplying? Uh, dividing or multiplying? Uh, we're dividing. Okay. 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 Hundred uh, fourteen thousand four hundred. Got that? Mm, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, wait, wait, sir, 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 sir. You you made a mistake. This is number eight. So you said one hundred eighty thousand multiplied by zero point zero eight. It should be. Uh, it's not three, one, mi three million. Three million. Three million. One, two, three million. Three million. Yes, two forty thousand. Okay, eight is three million, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Uh, let's look at this. Damaged furniture was sold. Okay. Now you've got the whole recoupment or scrapping allowance. Do you agree? Yes, sir. Okay. So if it's damaged furniture and I've sold it for fifty, that's proceeds, right? Yes, sir. It was originally purchased on the on the first of Jan four. 42, 42, uh, 42, 000, 42 so okay so uh we need to know carrying value now tax value so cost minus capital allowances yes equals tax value okay what is the cost 42 
How many yes, years sir. was this depreciated for? Two years. Uh, January January first to the end of sixteen would have been one. Seventeen yes, would have been two. But we stop there. So first of yes, twenty sixteen. Uh, it's January, February, March. Three. Three plus 12 is 15. I count 15 months. You count 15 months as well. Uh, yes, sir. I'll, I'll win the second year. Yeah. Yes, sir. Months. Okay, so what do we need to do? We need to say 42,000 divided by how many... Uh, what's the depreciation method for this? Vehicle, five years. Uh, no, so furniture, six years. Furniture, six years. Yes, sir. Okay, so divided by 60 years. What's the 60 years? 60 years sounds very long. Six years. Okay, six years. Yes, <laughs> Six years, 60 years, way too long. Yeah, so six years divided by six years. Um, actually, divided by six times 12, uh, 12 is 72 months. Time. Okay, uh, from 1st of January, January to January is 12 months. Then I've got um, January, February, March, 3 months, so 15 times 15. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Gives you the tax value. Okay, so the tax value is three three two five. How much did I sell it for? Yes, um, you sold it for fifteen. So scrapping allowance. Okay, scrapping allowance is this minus the fifteen. Okay, so loss of eighteen two fifty is under deductions and allowances. Yes, sir, that's fine. All right, number 10. This is the prepaid insurance story. Okay, this is looking at that whole 100,000 thing and the time frame associated with it. Remember that? Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, Locker paid an annual premium of 200,000 for the period 1st of Jan to 31st December. Okay, how many months in the current year? Three months. January, February, yes. March. Do you agree? Nine months in the no. side. So, so can we just look at, at, at what, <coughs> excuse me, what our year end is again, sir? Isn't our year end 31st? Yes, sir. So shouldn't we be looking at 31st? Oh, okay, I see, I see what you're saying from, from the previous from the previous um, year of assessment. Yes, sir, you're right. Okay, yeah, so 1 Jan 2017 to 31st March 2017, three months. Yes, sir. Okay, outside the financial year. Is nine months. Okay, so how much is that? Let's work it out. Two hundred thousand divided by twelve times by nine. Hundred and fifty. So this was fifty thousand. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. Right, Question. then you need to apply that whole prepaid expenditure story. Okay, so is this over 100,000? Yes, it is over. So if it's over than 100,000, can I claim? Yes, sir. No. No, it's, I can't sorry. No, you can't. No, you can't. So sir. let's go back and just show that. It's in the notes, prepaid expenses, less than six months or less than 100,000. Is it less than six months? No. Is it less than 100,000? No. No. If 
it was, then you would be able to claim the full amount. Doesn't that make sense? Yes, sir. Because all I'm going to be able to claim is January's 50,000. Got that. Yes, sir. Okay. Right, what happened here in 11? What does it say? Uh, 11 uh, an invention uh, to be used in the business was developed during the year of assessment by Locker PTY LTD following extensive research. The running research expenses of the development amounted to 95,000 and salaries to research uh, staff amounted to 80,000. Um, both these expenses were paid on the 31st of July 2016. The company received no external funding for research approval. It, uh, received no external re uh, funding for the research, full stop. Approval was obtained from the minister as well as the de uh, the Department of Science and Technology for the Development of in Invention Program on the 1st of May 2016. Okay, so obviously you're looking at R&D here, hey? Yes, sir. Okay, so R&D, how much did we spend? 95,000. Yes, sir. Of that, oh, not, no, not of that, that was separate. So the research and development expense was 95. The salaries and research staff amounted to 80. Yes. So will you look at the 80 and the 95? No, you only look at the 95. Yes, sir. Okay, both these expenses were paid on 31st of January. The um, company received no external funding. Um, so if there's no external funding, that means they, got, uh, they didn't get help from elsewhere where the minister applied. So oh, approval in terms of the DST, the Department of Science and Technology, for the work in, of the in, invention. Uh, Mention program. Okay, so um, let's first take the research and development cost into consideration. Thoughts? Uh, I, I think I did mine uh, wrong. So now that I'm reviewing the question, I did mine wrong. Because what I did was I actually included the, um, both amounts when actually you're, you're right. I shouldn't have uh, in included because I looked at it in the wrong way of saying you include the two amounts and because the the and also I looked at the the, the date wrong as well. Uh, because the I, I said yeah because you incurred or rather you you received the approval for funding after um after the I suppose after the commencement of the of the of the research. So uh, the the way that I did it was actually wrong because I think it's kind of like the reverse of what I did. Yeah, but when was it authorized? First of May. The department. Yes, which is before. Authorized actually. It in first of May. Yes. Sir. So if they authorize in first of May, can you claim? Uh, I'm not. Can you claim? Yeah, can you claim? Uh. Yes, you can. R and D. Yes. It's part of yeah. your business. Yes, sir. Okay, if it's claim, it's even better. So the actual deduction is 150% 100, of the research and development expenditure. Mm. Okay, so 150% of your expenditure. What did you spend? 95,000, do you agree? Yes, sir. Times by 150%. That's what SARS will allow you to claim. Uh, divide, not minus. Divide, divide, divide. Times, divide. 142, 500. That's how much they'll allow you to claim. Yes, sir. Okay, then you've got the staff scenario. Thoughts about the staff? Um, I would have added it uh, as a as actually a deduction. Okay, why? Uh, I would have included it in deductions because um, 
uh, because when following, because every single time I look at deductions, I look at my form, my not formula, excuse me, my uh, my definition, because um, uh, salaries are are incurred within a trade. They were actually incurred. They were during the year of assessment in the production of income, not of a capital nature, and they were laid out and it's all expended for the purposes of a trade. So that's why I would have added it to deduction. Uh, yeah, definitely a deduction. Definitely, 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 because of the research costs. Okay, yes, the research costs is specifically part of the, um, uh, how can I say, the setup. Yes, sir. Okay, so in terms of the, the, the staffs, um, the staff's wages and salaries, uh, would we be able to claim? Yes, sir. Okay. Can I ask a question? So, so what... careful, though. Was the staff's salary specific to the research and development or separate? Um, I think my question was about to come to that, actually, sir. Yeah. In the sense that, um, are we running a research and development company, or um, let's just read it again? Do you, or do research? You think, to me, it sounds like you are. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes, because me including it in, uh, as a deduction means that it's a research and development company. That's what it sounds as in like. We're, as well. we're getting paid to research whatever we're researching. Yes. Okay, let's just see it again. Um, no, no, no. So let, let, let's reread this. Sir. Yeah, just, um, yeah, let's just an, check, double check. An, yeah. an invention, right, to be used in the business. So I'm assuming that our, our business deals with, New technology. I don't know. Yeah, yes, the technology company. Um, to be used in the business was developed during the year of assessment, right? following the extensive research. So I'm assuming that firstly, number one, it's a technology company, right? Yeah. Number one. Then the running research expenses of the development. So then now, let me ask, here, here's where my next question will come in. If we are uh, a technology company, would, I suppose, I mean, uh, my answer to this in my head is yes. Would we, would we have a research development a research and development team that um, that helps us to research and development uh, to to help us to help us research about new technologies which we are then going to sell. Because now, if that's the case, then, then I don't think that these salaries would then be deductible because we are not, as in, like in the sense that we're not selling off our research, you know, to make an income, right? So it, it wouldn't be specifically within the for me, though, wouldn't specifically be within the 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 creation of income. It would probably be kind of like um, we're incurring these salaries and wages so that we are then able to build whatever software or yes to 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 come up with whatever software that we are gonna then sell. Then how would I have treated it if if it if if I look at it like that? Okay, well. Research and Development Section 11D um, talks about that. They, uh, it says, if a taxpayer incurs expenditure to fund the expenditure of another person carrying on research and development on behalf of the taxpayer, the taxpayer uh, qualifies for a deduction of 150% of the research and development if the R&D is approved by the minister, which it is in this case, right? Yes, sir. Okay. The expenditure incurred in respect of the research area is carried on by a taxpayer, which it is in this case. Yes, sir. The expenditure occurred on or after the date of receipt of the application. That's true. It was 1st of May is when you got the approval, and then 31st May is when you started building, right? Or, pay, or you got paid. Both mm. of expenses were paid. So paid meaning it was paid, but it was authorized before. Okay, yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Okay, then, then they say the amount is allocated and uh, to the extent that the person that carries on, out the research and development on behalf of the taxpayer is exempt from tax um, or the council of 
scientific and, and industrial research or the companies in the same group of companies if the company that carries out the research development does not claim 150% deduction the taxpayer deduction is limited to 150 of the actual expenditure incurred yeah so basically to me what that sounds like is that you would have to include the 80 thousand as well because those people are actually part of the process okay yes sir okay so from what that sounds like i would i would be inclined to add that into the actual uh, amount deductions yeah so yes. i would have to say asterisk include the eighty thousand bracket specific for the production of goods Okay, and then I would add another 150 to that. 150 percent, I mean. Okay, 120,000. Okay, so what did you do? You you added the like the 150 percent. Is that what you did? Uh, so the R and D spend was how much? 95. Yes, sir. So I just took 150% of 95 and then I took 150% of 80. Then you added them to your... Uh, yeah, well, I kept them separate. Okay. Oh, okay. 80,000. Okay, and then number 12. The following expenses were paid during the 2017 year of assessment. Okay, bank costs of 2000 for bank. Okay, bank cost is obviously a normal deduction. That's easy. Yes, 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 sir. Rental. Do you think we'll be able to claim that? Uh, I think so, sir. I wrote it down as... as yes, sir. Material. Definitely. I added it, yes. Part of your stock, basically. Uh, what are you going to call this? Packing material is fine. Okay, and then you've got the rules. Oh, and then that's the end. Okay. So then you would just sum up in total. Uh, this was before and after, that's fine. We just need to sum up this one. Okay, so... Income, income minus deductions and allowances gives you that figure. How is that going to be taxed? Were we looking at the, well, it should be at 28% uh, of the company. Yes. But don't we just leave it there because I think they're just looking at the taxable income. Pardon? They, don't they we just leave want us to stop there? Yeah, I think they were just asking for taxable income. Oh, okay, so. yeah, then you have to worry about the tax calculation. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, so yeah, um, two very long questions looking at taxable income. Um, there's a lot to discuss here because we're going through all the concepts again as we go, just to practice and just to highlight the key points. Um, yes, uh, can we finish off the next two next week? Is that all right? Or... No, so that's fine, because actually, it's, I think the way that we did it was actually quite nice, because we were not trying to rush through it, and we were actually like um, breaking down the question and trying to really understand what the, okay. the examiner was right, trying well, to solve. Good. Um, as, really as long as you're happy that. with that, because then, then, then we can carry on doing this. I just thought that, um, obviously, it would be nice to finish a whole pass paper every week, but then, yeah, that might be yes. a bit too much. Yes, sir. No, I think the the way that we we did it, like I was saying, I think this was for me was very fruitful because oh, okay, I got a chance to really 
because uh, it wasn't it wasn't for me it wasn't specifically about uh yeah we have to mark this whole question paper and then we're done but okay. i really need just to ask the questions yes. certain questions to really yeah, understand this yeah, one i mean if, if you're happy to do it this way i'm happy to carry on doing it this way i just i just thought that maybe you wanted to do more that's why <laughs> No, 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 like the way that we're doing it like this is fine. Like we, because I mean, uh, uh, they basically asking the same things yes. from question one to question two. Yeah, you'll so, see that it comes up quite under- often. Yeah, the, sim- the yeah. same type of questions. Yeah. So to understand the the concepts and whatever, I mean, if if I understand one long question one and I understand all the concepts, I think I'll be able to apply them. To each, okay, obviously they're differentiating between whether it's a micro company or SBC, but yeah, we haven't seen it, any micro yet. Yeah. yeah, so no, there's there's nothing wrong in the in the in this pace that we're going for me specifically. I don't know if you, but I I like this pace because no, we're I'm, going. I'm happy to go at whichever pace you prefer. 